Hello, I'm Claire Lathwood, Consultant Clinical Health Psychologist at Berkshire Healthcare Trust. Today I'd like to talk to you about the work of the Clinical Health Psychology Service here and I've got a presentation to show you. So first of all, uh, an overview of what the service does. Um, the most obvious thing that people first think of when they think of the work of a clinical health psychologist is the clinical work, the psychological assessment and intervention for people and their families who have um, serious and or chronic um, illness uh, in their lives. We also work with the multidisciplinary teams um, alongside a wide range of professionals, including doctors, nurses, physios, and so on. We do a lot of um, staff skills development work. So we try and infuse the, um, the holistic healthcare that people are receiving with psychological skills. Um, most psychological work is not done by psychologists, it's actually done by the day to day people who come into contact with that person. And we can offer them consultation if they're feeling stuck in the management of a case and regular supervision if they need it. As you go through your career, you can also find yourself working more alongside organisational development in shaping healthcare systems to produce the best outcomes for patients. The sorts of services that we cover here in Berkshire include diabetes, chronic pain. We have a new service in intensive care, hematology, weight management services um, in, in terms of bariatric surgery, gastroenterology. And we have a good uh, service in um, oncology and um, cancer rehabilitation. So what do you need to do to train to be a clinical health psychologist? Um, well, the first thing is to have a degree in uh, in psychology at at least a 2-1 level. And this needs to give you graduate basis of chartership membership of the BPS. So both routes of a clinical and counselling health psychology uh, are doctoral level courses. The clinical psychology route would involve getting some experience after your uh, first degree and um, both from a, a research and a clinical perspective, I'd suggest, and then going on to the three year doctoral qualification. This is funded by the NHS, which is obviously um, a great advantage. Counselling psychologists, on the other hand, will also go through the um, three year doctoral um, uh, qualification, but they're usually self funded or they can go through an independent route uh, by getting the qualification in, in counselling psychology. Another area that people work in is health psychology, and this is a two stage training and it's a, it's a more general qualification in applying the psychology theory to um, the world of, of health management. And many of our psychologists are qualified in both clinical and counselling and also a health psychology um, master's or, or doctorate. Um, and, and that's the, the route I, I took. I qualified as a clinical psychologist first and then went on to the health psychology um, MSc at the time. Um, if you want to know more about that, look on the BPS website. There's plenty of good information there. So clinical health psychology can be a really rewarding area. Um, and for me, one of the most exciting thing is, is offering a new perspective on people's health struggles uh, and with the aim of improving their ultimate outcomes. Now, whether that's the condition itself getting better because their people are uh, adhering to um, medical recommendations more maybe, or um, perhaps um, you know, living well alongside their condition. Uh, we can help people in really difficult life situations live alongside their health condition. Um, and I think there's nothing more rewarding than people reporting that their quality of life has been improved uh, because of the work they've been doing with you. We work with people from all walks of life and right across the age range. So my service specifically works with adults, but there are also clinical health psychologists working with children. 
not so much in our trust, but uh, we do have some input into um, paediatrics at the Royal Barks. We also work with um, a range of different health professionals, more obviously doctors and nurses and so on, but we also um, have links with um, chaplains, hospital chaplains, and of course, mental health specialists who might share the care of our patients with us. It is a challenging area to work in. Um, it's a relatively recent um, addition to the um, range of psychology specialties. And often people will need to come on a journey with you in terms of their understanding of what's affecting this person and how to help them. Sometimes we are uh, faced with some very emotionally challenging situations um, and it is difficult sometimes to sit alongside people who are struggling. Um, but again, this is also one of the biggest rewards that we get from um, our work. Um, and we can find ourselves in very challenging settings, for example, ICU and hospice care. So day to day, what do we do? Well, as, as I said earlier, we can work with um, patients to assess them and help them make sense of what, what they're struggling with. And we can run uh, therapy sessions either on a one-to-one -one basis or in a group setting. We really value our work with our colleagues, um, liaising with them, supporting them, helping them develop their psychological skills and very much uh, value being part of a multidisciplinary team, uh, attending team discussions, case reviews and so on. And as I said earlier, uh, we can also shape the way that health services are, um, are, are governed and managed and the direction of travel as they develop. So uh, I'm very fortunate that two of our team have, um, have offered to share their journeys with you. The first is Dr. Lucy Grant, who is a clinical health psychologist, um, a consultant in our team. She qualified, had, did her first degree in um, uh, 2000 and followed this with an MSc in counselling, sorry, health psychology. Her clinical experience prior to her doctoral training was um, as a support worker in a neuro rehab setting. Uh, a voluntary worker in a community support role in mental health uh, and was a paid assistant role in um, a DBT, dialectical behaviour therapy service uh, for people with learning disabilities. Uh, she gained her doctorate in 2000 and has worked in services such as the Royal Marsden um, before coming to us. So Lucy has been very much interested in the relationship between mind and body and the psychological impact of illnesses. And one of the um, academic um, areas that she investigated was a qualitative study on teenage mothers' experiences of antenatal and postnatal care and looking at variation in mood associated with women's menstrual cycles. Her doctoral thesis was looking at um, the experiences of parents with an adolescent with cystic fibrosis and she also is, is interested in generally um, par parental experiences in the area of cancer. When she was at St Thomas's Hospital in the Cancer Support Service she found her, her vocation the thing that really fired her and that was working in the area of cancer and she still leads um, our service in that area today. And the other psychologist who shared their journey is Dr. Petra Cadlader, who actually previously worked in telecommunications and uh, did a postgraduate conversion to a psych uh, the equivalent of a psychology degree in 2013. She had quite a bit of voluntary experience before her uh, uh, doctoral training in, in counselling psychology, including in a stroke unit um, in a cancer centre and um, at the Alzheimer's Society Daycare Centre. She conducted uh, a doctorate in uh, counselling psychology, which was completed in 2020. And as you can see, had a range of um, training placements. One of those was 
uh, with us and I'm pleased to say that she came to join us after her training was complete. Uh, for Petra, her personal experiences were the thing that, um, that affected her decision to work with people with health problems and I think um, her interest grew as she worked in, in her voluntary roles and she could see the, uh, the the significant contribution that working on people's psychological well-being can have in terms of the outcome of their conditions. So, as I said, she worked on training patients with us and she's also worked in the eating disorders service. And now she focuses her work on um, cancer and um, palliative care. If you want more information, there's plenty of um, material on the British Psychological Society uh, website. Uh, and there's also a link here to Psychological Professions Network, which can give you um, um, information to help you plan your next steps. And you can also contact the, um, the email address here, careers events at Berkshire Healthcare, and do let us know if you have any further questions. Thank you for listening.